Okay. So, <laughs> if you can see my screen, I pilfered the title from an old presentation uh, because the date is wrong. But um, I promise you some of the slides are newer. Um, there, there are quite a lot of them, but it's, it's really, um, I can go through them pretty quickly. So the presentation should not be more than like 15 minutes. And then after that, we'll have another 10, 10 or so minutes to actually look at, uh, look at map roulette. Um, if at any point you'd, you'd like me to talk more or less about a certain topic, feel free to um, kind of uh, um, just interrupt me and, and we, can, we can tailor it to whatever you want to hear, hear uh, most about. Um, let me make sure that I can forward this. Okay, so MapRoulette, in a nutshell, it's microtasking for OpenStreetMap. So it's very small tasks to, uh, to improve the map uh, for, for everybody. Um, basically connecting volunteer mappers with simple map fi fixing task, tasks. Uh, there's challenges all over the world uh, where there's about 2 million tasks available and f uh, across 4,300 different challenges. And challenges are basically groups of tasks that you can, uh, that are around the same team theme or around the same, uh, the same location of both. Uh, there's things like road alignment, POI improvement, waterways, coastlines, and many, many more. Uh, so the, uh, there's, we've, we've fixed well over 2 million tasks in MapRoulette since its, since its beginning, and I'll go into the, into the history a little bit um, in the next few slides. We have about uh, 3,300 people visiting, uh, unique visitors per month from 110 different countries, 110 plus different countries. So it's quite a good, good uh, geographic reach that we have built. Um, and uh, we have about 90,000 kind of tasks being viewed or pages being viewed, with, which basically corresponds to tasks being viewed. And the average visitor stays on the MapRoulette website for more than 40 minutes. So it's, there must be something we're doing, uh, we're doing right because people like sticking around. That's really the idea. It's, it's supposed to be sort of a little bit addictive once you get started that you just kind of keep going with these tasks because they're small and most of them are pretty easy. Um, so stepping back a little bit, like what, what are we trying to, what is MapRoulette trying to accomplish? Um, basically, there's a, there's a lot of mappers um, that, that don't, really, don't really map a lot or at all. Um, these, these graphs and, and Jennings is, is on the line. He's, he's done a lot of research into kind of mapper dynamics and these, uh, these charts are partially uh, pilfered from his, uh, from his presentations. But what I'm trying to say with this is that a lot of uh, a lot of mappers is what I what I call um, like hit and run mappers. They they contribute once or maybe a couple times and then go away forever. And a lot of mappers actually don't uh, don't contribute at all ever. This is a very old chart, um, but the the breakdown basically still uh, still um, still holds. Where basically about seventy percent of people who sign up for OSM never contribute at all. So what MapRoulette tries to do about that is, is basically to lower the barrier for kind of getting started with mapping. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people um, sign up but never start, start to map and some of them we don't know and some of them we don't. But at least part of the reason I, 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 um, I like to think is that there's often not an easy way to find out like where should I start. And, um, and uh, MapRoulette breaks down that problem into like, okay, very, let's, let's give users very small tasks and uh, let's make them easy to find. So it all started uh, around 2012 when the, when the, when the license changed um, from, from Creative Commons to, to ODBL um, came about. So that was a big moment in OpenStreetMap when a lot of this data disappeared for, uh, for legal reasons. And I won't go into a lot of detail, but it left it left a lot of mess on the map as as, as data got randomly deleted. And you see some samples uh, on the right here. Of course, it's a, this is not a this is not a tenable situation. Uh, look at that mess. Um, it's it's really quite ugly to look at, and it's impossible to to navigate over. So, um, and this was. This is uh, at the time people started making like routing graphs between mo the most important cities in the US. Um, so as, as we started to fix the map up, um, how, how easy was it or how, uh, how correct was the, basically the, the routes from city to city. Um, so we, start, we started kind of fixing up the map, but it was going very slowly. So I started building this app that basically highlighted the, um, the missing segments on the map, right? So this here you see sort of the, the basic idea of map roulette where you, where you, um, where you, a very small problem on the map gets highlighted and people are asked to fix that, that one simple problem. 
and uh, back then it was called the uh, remapatron um so um basically it was basically because it was just single purpose you could only do one thing which is basically fix fix the mess that was left by uh, by this uh, by all this deleted data from from changing the license from one thing to another and that went pretty well so it got me thinking about how to how to make how to make how to kind of build on that concept right so we did some more different um, different uh, types of fixes. We did road connectivity. We did what we called Zorro roads with very sharp angles. Um, we did uh, we did lane counts on 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 interstates, and and that 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 proved to be pretty popular. People loved fixing these small things, and uh, and, um, and and working on these working on these challenges. It was so we um, in the end we landed on kind of the. The system that is now MapRoulette, where people, where you could, where you could have different types of challenges to choose from, with different types of tasks, and um, and it evolved kind of since 2013. 13, it has evolved from from what you see on the left to what you see on the right, um, and and um, it's basically become a very become a become a, a pretty elaborate system where that's still easy to use, but uh, also lets people lets people um, kind of create their own challenges and and uh, find find tasks easier than ever before. Um, so I'm going to go through these slides pretty quickly, and um, and um, just because just because I want to get to the live kind of present part of the presentation also. So just beware that this is going to be a pretty quick kind of slide through through all these different um, aspects of the application. So basically, the core of it is is you have challenges, right? So those are groups of tasks that are similar and that are created by the same person. We have, like I said, we have about 4,300 of them. More than more uh, more than two million total. So it becomes important. Like, how do you choose between those uh, between those tasks and what what is what you what you actually want to work on? So for that, we have this we have this screen where you can basically scroll through all these different uh, challenges by uh, in all, in a big long list. But you can also filter them by uh, by category, by difficulty, uh, by location. You can also search for specific keywords. And of course, there's a map where you can kind of see geographically where different tasks uh, where different tasks are. So that gives you a few different ways to look at look at these challenges and and uh, and choose what you want to work on. So if you go to an example, here's here's one challenge. If you click on, if you make a choice, and this is what this is the screen that you would land on if you choose a challenge. And uh, let me just quick look at the chat to see if there's any. Uh, no, these are not questions to me. Okay, let me continue. Um, so this is an example of like, what you see when you click on one challenge. You see to the left a map of the tasks that need to be done. And then on the right, some information with also some, some metrics about how, how far along we are as a community with, with, these, uh, with this particular challenge. So if you then click on start, let me go back. Yeah, if you click on start, you get a ra basically a random task from this challenge. So the system selects, that's the roulette part of it. The system selects a random task for you. In this way, in this case, it is a, a road somewhere in, um, uh, uh, somewhere in, um, somewhere in, I think this is, this is Vietnam, right? I'm missing the context, but yeah, um, that has a sharp angle and that we'd like to be fixed. So then you go to, um, you, you can change the, the layout, I won't go into that now, but if depending on your screen size, you can change these, the location of these widgets and so on. Um, so if you, if you have a larger screen, it, would, might, it may, for example, look like this. So if you then go, um, if you then go to the left, you can click on edit, which will take you to the regular OpenStreetMap editor. And, um, and you can you can select various other options. If you can see that it's not an issue, you can click that as well. And you can go go to the next task, or you can just skip it for any other reason as well. So clicking on edit will take you, like I said, to to uh, to the editor of your choice, which you can select in that same panel. Um, in this case, we're going to ID, and we'll we'll zoom in on that same location, and it will ask you, or it will basically um, uh, let you kind of fix the challenge as per kind of the instructions that you would see at the at the top left here. So in this case, it's pretty easy to see that this road is kind of poorly aligned, and that you just need to drag that node uh, to the right uh, to the right location. After you've done this kind of fairly simple mapping task, um, you can you can upload the result, and it will be pre-filled with uh, some MapRoulette um, submitted information. Like there's um, there's a MapRoulette hashtag and and a, and a hashtag for the for the challenge as well. And you can of course add the comment 
add to that comment with your own uh, with your own uh, comments if you have them. And then you return to Maprolet in a different browser uh, tab, and you say I fixed it. And then you um, you you get to uh, leave a comment that can be read by the person who created the challenge. And um, and you can be on your way. And basically, then the rule the roulette wheel spins again, and you get your next uh, you get your you go all the way back to the beginning. You, you get your next uh, task. Um, so. So here we kind of, I'm jumping around a little bit so because, because I cut out a bunch of slides just because we only have that limited amount of time. So on the management side of things, there's uh, anyone can, um, if, you, if you log into MapRoulette using your OpenStreetMap account, you not, only, you not only get access to these tasks to complete, but you also get access to the kind of the management dashboard where you can create your own, uh, you can create your own challenges as well. Uh, so the, um, there's a each each user gets a project that, that kind of looks like this. It contains a list of all the challenges that that are created under that project and some and some metrics about kind of where um, uh, how people are uh, how your challenges are doing. And then um, of course the part that some of you are interested in also is like how do you create these challenges? That's also done through this project dashboard, you can add a new challenge and that takes you to a wizard that you, that, is re that was recently um, kind of completely redone. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to show that to you guys um, so, so that we can have a look at this um, kind of uh, hopefully uh, more simplified uh, uh, challenge wizard. I'm only, I'm only showing the, f the first screen here in the slide. And um, well, that uh, the, the, the challenge information screen will give you a lot of ways to look at, to break down the different, uh, to different tasks as well. And also um, to, kind of to download the results as a CSV file. Uh, so you can, so you can analyze what, what the mappers have done with your, uh, with your results, how, ma how many tasks were fixed, how many tasks were too hard perhaps, and how many tasks were, uh, were skipped and all those different, all those different statuses. And you can do some analysis to, uh, to maybe improve your, your challenge in the future. Okay, that was actually pretty quick. Um, so, so any questions about the first part? I, I realized I went through that real quick. So um, actually a little bit quicker than I expected. So um, before I jump into the kind of the live part, I'm happy to kind of take a little break and stop talking and, and take some questions about this if you if you have any at the moment. There are a few in the chat. Cool, yeah. And uh, can, can you perhaps... Um, um, Curate them for me, Mar sure. Yeah, actually, Diane, do you want to ask your, your question about non-issue? Um, I think, yeah, I was just a little confused about what happens when you click not an issue because it's a little unclear from the, the user interface. And presumably, you look at it and go, this actually doesn't need to be fixed. It's fine. And so you click not an issue. And then does that actually remove it from that task and call it a completed thing? Or, or like what happens on the back side? Right. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. And it's, I think I've, I've heard that a few times. And, and, um, and um, so what it does is basically if you, if you, if you can clearly see from, from, uh, from from the context within Maprolet, you look at the map and you see that there's that that there's nothing to be edited. Um, then you then you then you would you would indicate that it's not an issue uh, because kind of the, the the problem has gone away by some other by some other means, and it will in fact be removed from the from the rotation. So another mapper will not see that challenge then. And, I guess um, that makes sense that somebody else might have just corrected it, but not within this task of Maprolet, and that's why it shows up. Or yeah, so I think a lot of the so one of the things that I that 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 I really looking to for ideas to improve is that the tasks kind of have a tendency to get stale. Like I said, there's like two two million of them there, yeah. um, and a lot of them are like older than like older than a year, and um, like a lot of stuff gets done in a year in in OSM as you all know, and uh, and tasks that gets fix gets uh, problems get fixed outside of Maprolet, and the tasks don't get automatically updated. So the onus is kind of on the on the people who, on the people who created the challenges to kind of keep them up to date as well which is possible right. it's just it's just most people don't do it so um so that that happens quite often and it's something we're looking to sort of address perfect um, yeah it's good to know and explaining to people too when they use it so thanks yeah uh, diane one other one other reason um like when i was creating a, a large geojson file that had a bunch of, of railway platforms in it 
the, um, I think it was originally a, uh, uh, a turbo uh, query that, that, that created that JSON file for me. And it wasn't perfect at getting right. the entire universe of set that I wanted to. So 90, 95% of it was correct, but the other five or 10 ended up turning into not an issue. So that's another way that can, that can creep in. Great. Uh, Dara, was your question answered? It was, thank you. Okay. Um, Christopher, do you want to pose a question? Just going down the list here, people who wrote in the chat. Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> I know that you probably have other things planned um, and maybe this is going to fit into your presentation in a minute, but the problems that I have been having is when I, I have a, a list of locations in a JSON file, and I try to upload that and create a, uh, a challenge. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It seems like there might be some kind of upper limit of size. Um, so when I have smaller files, it seems to work more. But sometimes when I upload a file, it just gives me one location instead of all of the locations. So I'd love if, I, and this might be online somewhere, but like an example of what a file has to be formatted like for it to successfully be imported maybe, or what the upper limit is, or whatever else you have to say about that. Thank you. Right, yeah. That's, yeah, it's also, that's also a really good question that I, that is, um, that is, um, yeah, very, it's, there's, it's easy to, um, to kind of get, like GeoJSON is well defined, but, but there's also a lot of ways to, to do it. Um, uh, there you can wrap things in feature collections and geometry collection, all those things. Um, for Mapperlet, there's actually a, uh, there's, there's a uh, Mapperlet um, wiki page that ex should explain that quite well, which I'll, I'll look up and post in the chat before we, before we finish. Um, a couple of, like one note about very large GeoJSON files, there's Mapperlet has the option of um, accepting uh, what we call line by line GeoJSON, where basically the, it's not one big JSON object, but each line is a separate feature, uh, which is not wrapped in a, in a, in a bigger kind of JSON uh, object, um, which is a newer kind of variant of the GeoJSON spec. Uh, and that, that, is, that, that lends itself better because it streams in, as it, as it were, it doesn't have to be loaded all the way before it gets parsed. And that might lend itself for, uh, for, um, for larger files a little bit better. Um, but again, I'll look up the, um, the, the, the um, corresponding wiki pages and um, for, for any, for, for questions, for also for questions like this, um, I, I try and be, I try to be pretty responsive in the Mapperlet channel, Slack channel. Um, and of, of course, you can always uh, drop me a line uh, uh, personally um, as well. I'm always happy to help if there's, if there's specific problems. Uh, if all else fails, you can also, of course, um, drop an issue on the Mapperlet GitHub uh, for, uh, for specific, if you need help with specific um, kind of challenge creation or other, or other problems. But I hope, the, I hope the wiki documentation will, will help you a little bit um, with uh, creating the challenges. I'm actually looking it up now while we talk. I just put in the link for the OSMUS Slack as well. If you're not already on there, it's a great resource, and there's a couple thousand people to ask questions to as well. And meet. So here's a couple of resources that I'm posting. The, the OSM diary entry is kind of old, but it's still, um, it still does. I don't know how much it says about GeoJSON. This is actually more for overpass. Anyway, so I hope um, I hope that that helps a little bit, Christopher. If you if you have any any more um, uh, questions about it, feel free to kind of hit me up uh, off offline, and we can we can talk more for sure. Um, do you guys have any other questions before I move on to the um, to the sort of the live part, the the, the scary part? Okay, maybe I'll do that. Let's see, let me get my right uh, browser window. Yes. Okay, a couple things here. Uh, let me share. Mm, here. So I'm sharing in my browser window. Um, 
So I'm not going to do a full walkthrough of, of the MapRelate interface because I, I showed most of it in the um, in the uh, in the demo just now or in the in the presentation. Just kind of the because it looks a little bit different because some of the slides are a few months old and we're constantly improving. Um, so there is uh, there is a there's a global activity view where you can see what people are working on right now. So you can see right now people are kind of doing a lot of work in Mexico. Um, if you log in at any other point in the day, it will show something else probably. Uh, so one person is working in the US. So that's that's kind of interesting new thing that you could that you could look at. Um, so the dashboard gives you quick access to kind of the people you're following, which is also a newer option. So if you want to if you want to follow another mapper for whatever reason, you can follow their their activity on MapRoulette. Um, you can you can quickly jump into the most popular challenges or ones that you favorited, um, and some feature challenges as well, and a list of your own recent contributions. So just a quick way to kind of jump into the things that you uh, that you might like to work on, and uh, and uh, to give you some. Uh, some s sort of an activity feed for yourself. Um, so this is basically the screen that I showed uh, at length in the in the presentation, where you find the challenges. Um, then there's a leaderboard where you can where you can uh, that you can narrow down by country or by uh, by time period as well. So you can see that some people are like really doing a lot because like one you can basically get five points for everything that you fix and like a fewer amount of points for things that you um, that you uh, that you um, that you mark as not an issue or other things. That's kind of random, but that's just the way we decided to do it. Um, and then the learn link just goes to the wiki um, that I just linked a um, a couple pages from. So this has this has uh, the wiki has is part of the GitHub repository, and it gives you a um, it gives you um, a, a bunch of articles on various aspects of of um, of challenge creation. Uh, mapping with MapRoulette um, and working as teams. There's even some something about uh, the API that you can use in, in uh, to connect with the different different applications, and some some information for developers as well if you want to contribute. Um, uh, on contribution, just just one note: there is localization um, uh, using Transfix, which is um, so we basically pull in tra translation files every with every release. So if if you know anyone or are someone who would like to help translate MapRoulette in um, into uh, into uh, into a new into a different uh, language, uh, then you're more than welcome to uh, to uh, um, to contribute. Um, and um, we already have like eight or nine languages, but we're always looking for more, of course, because we want we want to give people the best sort of um, native language experience. All right, so I wanted to. Um, I think there's quite there were quite a few people that that were. Um, interested in, in learning a little bit about how to create a challenge and how to avoid some common pitfalls. So I think, uh, I think because I already talked about the, um, the, the mapping aspects, so going through a task and, 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 and editing a task um, in, the, in the presentation, I'll, I'll focus a little bit more on, the, on creating a challenge uh, in, this, in this live demo, if that's, uh, if that's all right with you all. Um, I'm gonna keep it fairly simple um, I already prepared sort of an, an overpass query. So there's basically, there's two main kind of ways that you can create a challenge. Everything happens through the user interface. So there's no programming or no um, kind of API interaction involved. It's, so it's a non-technical process, but the only technical part, of course, you need the, ge the geometries for the task. So you need the locations for where you want people to work. Those can be points, those can be line strings, they can even be polygons, but anything you would want to display um, on um, on the map. So anything that people would, if you go to a challenge, you go to, for example, this one here and you click start. So the blue line here, that's that's your task geometry, if you will. Um, and and that's something, of course, you need to supply for each task is a, has, a, has a geometry. So that's something you need to prepare. There's basically two ways you can do that. Either you have a GeoJSON file, which is basically um, a, um, a, um, a serialized geometry file format. So if you're familiar with QGIS, QGIS is able to export GeoJSON files, uh, even though they do need some tweaking before they go into MapRoulette, but that's maybe for another evening. Um, but there's there's most software that, that, that works with geospatial data can work with GeoJSON as well. Um, so you can upload GeoJSON, a GeoJSON file or link or link to one that's already sitting on the web somewhere. Um, the other method that um, that a lot of people prefer 
is uh, using overpass. So um, who of you is, uh, I can't see all your faces, but who is, let me pull that forward. Is, um, I'm a, let me just, I, it's hard for me to interact with you, I guess, because I don't, I don't want you all to unmute at the same time. That will be kind of chaotic, but I'm gonna assume that some of you are familiar with overpass, but most of you are not. Um, overpass is basically a way to ask questions to the OpenStreetMap database. It's very powerful, but the sim simple asking simple questions is also fairly simple. Um, there's definitely a learning curve, um, but there's uh, the overpass has a has a website that has a sort of a wizard interface as well, so you can that lets you that helps you learn. Um, so so let me let me start with that. So you can use the results of an overpass query as an input for a MapRoulette challenge. So um, here's a an overpass query that I would call intermediate level. <laughs> it's uh, the simplest overpass queries are just um, basically it's a wizard. You can do something like um, drinking water. You type it in the wizard, you type build query, and it will do all the magic for you. And you say run, and you will get all the drinking water resources in this in this area of the map, which is apparently none. So if I go to maybe a more populated area um, and I run the query again, you'll probably see a few points. See, there's a few kind of uh, water fountains that are mapped in OSM. So it is very simplest. That's what you would do for uh, to create um, to, cr to create a data query using Overpass. So you could use this if you have someone if you have if you want people to to add to add features to drinking water uh, water fountains, and that would be an example query that you could use. So you could you can um, and I'll 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 go into a real example now because we only have a few minutes before and before the forty five minute mark. So take this query here. It's a little bit more advanced and it's not really important that you fully understand it right now. But this basically queries for. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, it defines an area which is Rutland County in Vermont. Um, it defines that I want to query for ways with highway equals residential tags. Um, that also have a little bit of sort of a tiger history attached to them using this, this tiger imported tag, but also don't have a name. So these are residential roads that have no name and are part of a tiger import and, and lie within this county. So that may seem pretty technical. And again, this is not something that is within the scope of tonight, um, but I'm just wanted to show you how that, how that works, how, how a query like this could work with MapRoulette. So say you have this query, I copy this and I go to MapRoulette and I go to the, the, um, the, the, the my project page basically. So this is basically, it sits here, right? Um, if you logged in, you click on your user and you say create and manage. And um, because I'm, I'm the super user, I see everyone's projects, but this is mine. And I, I can select uh, add challenge. And uh, basically you get taken through this wizard. So, um, you can say, you give it a title, unnamed residential roads in whatever county it was. Um, and here you have the option of how you're going to deal with your geometries, right? So here's the GeoJSON options that I mentioned. So you have a, a GeoJSON link on the internet, uh, someone you want, something you want to upload, or you have this overpass query that you could just paste. Um, and there's a few tricks, tips and tricks, which are described in the wiki page that we link to here um, that, so that, that you have to watch out for. Um, but basically at its simplest, that's, that's how that would work. Then you need to quickly describe your challenge, uh, asking mappers to fix unnamed and imported residential roads in Vermont. Um, so this belongs to the roads category. So people can find it under that in the category later. And um, then perhaps one, and the last very important thing is the instructions for the map, right? So this needs to be as specific as you can. You can, you can the mapper needs to be able to know what, what, he, what, they, need, what they need to do uh, when they see this instruction. So right now I'm gonna keep it a little brief for, for, for time's sake, but you would say something like, um, this is a road that was imported from Tiger and may not have been improved since then. It also 
also does not have a name. Use the tiger overlay to find out the name. Fix the alignment if needed. And well, thanks. Okay, so this could probably be a better, you could also use links, it's Markdown. So if you're familiar with Markdown, you can add, you can add, um, you can add some Markdown um, uh, tagging, et cetera. Um, so I'm, I'm, you, can, you, can, you can ascribe this difficulty, so it's easy, normal, expert. I think this is normal. It's not for very beginners, but it's easy enough for kind of sort of mid-level sort of semi-experienced mappers. And then everything else is now, this is, so this is the new layout. So everything else, all the customizations that you might want to do uh, are, uh, are now grouped into these buckets. You can, you can skip all these and you will have a working challenge. If you want to, if you want to um, uh, change anything else or configure custom map layers, um, prioritization rules, um, awesome change set info, like all these things you can, you can configure for uh, if you get more familiar with how all these things work. Um, but um, but you don't have to. Then you click finish, and uh, Mapperlet will start connecting to Overpass to 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 fix to to fetch these challenges, right? And it will take a little bit of time because Overpass takes a little bit of time to respond. But it will usually not be too long if your query is uh, is small. And I recommend not doing more than a few thousand tasks per challenge. You can, but I just. I like to say that like it, it becomes an untractable problem, right? <laughs> if you're uh, if you have thousands and thousands and thousands of tasks in one challenge, people won't see like the end of the road. You know, they they contribute, but it seems like a like a an, an endless uh, task basically to fix all that up. So this is pretty constra constrained to one county and a sm small amount of roads. So then you can basically say start challenge, and then you get your first task. So that's done. Um, so here's your here's the here's the, here's the imported road. You can click edit, and um, you can see. Um, so so mapper will even select it for you. So here you can start the mapper can start working on this. Like you can see that this is probably not right. Well, I won't go into editing the editing aspect of it right now, although I'd love to. But uh, you can see that there's just not. Um, this is probably more like a driveway. Uh, so let me quickly upload this. So I've done something useful tonight. Um, so here, there's no change set comment because I didn't go into that setting. But if you would go into that setting in Mapperlet, uh, you would you would basically uh, see a pre-filled change set comment here. So I'm going to do that myself. Let's fix up old residential. And you can comment all you want on my mapping technique, but that's for another time. <laughs> okay, upload. So that's one task fixed. Go back to uh, back to Mapperlet and say I fixed it. Submit. So I'm going to go back to the challenge now. It says fixed one out of nine seventy four. So yeah, that's sort of a um, a quick overview of how to create challenges. And I think that's also kind of all I have time for. Um, I think I think the best way to spend the rest of the time is just to open the floor for questions and uh, about kind of the specifics of this or anything about Mapperlet rather than just me continue talking. So um, let me just leave it at this for for tonight, and um, I'm I'm happy to give more specific explanations on various parts of the process in um, some future get together, but um, but I think it's best to kind of leave it at this for tonight. Uh, so thanks, and I'm I'm looking forward to answering some of your some of your questions.